What would you rather store your wealth in? This stack of plastic-like polymers or ounces of this rare stardust? I love gold! In today's video, I will share with you everything you need to know about buying gold and silver in Canada. So if you want to add precious metals to your investment portfolio, make sure you watch this video till the end. What is gold and silver? They are rare elements known as precious metals. Gold is the most malleable and ductile of all the metals. It is also one of the densest metals and a good conductor of heat and electricity. On top of this, it doesn't tarnish or corrode. Silver is the most conductive and reflective metal on earth. It is also very ductile and malleable. In addition, silver has antimicrobial properties. It is believed that these elements are formed from a supernova when a star explodes billions of years ago. So yes, it's stardust. These metals have been sought after as early as 5,000 years ago, used to make jewelry and ornaments. And around 2,500 years ago, gold and silver was struck into coins and used as currency. Only in the last century, they stopped circulating coins with gold and silver, but they still make precious metal coins and that doesn't make them any less valuable. Today, gold trades around 2,400 hundred dollars an ounce and is mainly used as a monetary metal but also in art jewelry electronics aerospace and even medicine and dentistry while silver trades around thirty dollars an ounce and is used in jewelry silverware electronics cars solar panels photography water purification medicine yoga pants and well known as an industrial metal so what are the reasons to buy gold and silver gold and silver are tangible assets that don't do anything they don't generate earnings, they don't earn interest, and they don't pay a dividend. This is because gold and silver isn't an investment. It can be, but really they should be treated like a different asset class in your investment portfolio. For example, cash isn't an investment, but serves a purpose in your portfolio. Cash can help you minimize risk and take advantage of opportunity. Gold and silver can also reduce your risk. These metals are considered to be safe haven assets when the stock market crashes, the entire asset bubble bursts, inflation increases, recession hits, or even a war breaks out. Your investment portfolio may take a big hit, but gold and silver tend to do the opposite. They increase in value as everything else decreases most of the time. This is why gold and silver are considered insurance more than an investment. Another reason to buy and hold gold and silver is for a store of value and wealth. Cash or fiat currency has no intrinsic value and is not a good store of wealth. Cash slowly becomes inflated and slowly loses its buying power. $100 30 years ago cannot get you the same goods and services today. But if you stored your wealth in gold instead of cash, $100 worth of gold 30 years ago is worth around $600 today. Now that $600 may only get you the same goods they could get you 30 years ago so it's not a good way to build wealth but it still remains the safest way to store wealth and unlike other asset classes gold and silver is private and generational wealth meaning no one needs to know you got it and no one needs to know who you give it to so when buying precious metals what should you buy if you're just trading these metals for a capital gain or to reduce risk in your investment portfolio you can just simply buy a gold or silver ETF or what they call paper gold and silver but this doesn't offer the same insurance value, privacy, and generational wealth as the physical metal. And like the saying goes, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. Now the best form of gold and silver to buy is what they call bullion. Bullion is the metal highly concentrated, usually 99.9 .9 or 0.999% pure. Bullion usually comes in the form of a bar, round, or coin. It does come in more unique shapes and in the form of jewelry, but expect to pay a higher premium. Premium meaning the extra cost added to the current spot price of the metal. When buying bullion, it's best to pay as close to the spot price as possible. Spot price being the current price it's trading in the bullion markets. The first rule is to avoid fractional gold and silver. This is bullion that is less than one ounce. Anything less than one ounce will have a higher premium. Bars will usually give you the best deals and are more popular for long-term holding, especially when you buy in larger sizes. So if you buy a 100 ounce bar, you will pay less per ounce versus buying a one ounce bar. Rounds will be a slightly higher premium than bars because they most commonly come in one ounce and have some kind of artistic design on them. Coins will have an even higher premium than rounds. This is because coins are created by government mints and have a face value. So they are minted by a well-known reputable mint and can be used as legal tender. You wouldn't use it as legal tender because it's a ripoff, but you could. Although coins have a higher premium, they are still very popular. This is because government minted coins are guaranteed to have the correct purity and highest quality of bullion. So they give you a peace of mind that what you're paying for is actually pure gold or silver. Government minted coins are a lot easier to sell, especially if it's a popular recognizable coin like the American Silver Eagle 
or the gold South African Cougarant. And actually, government mints do create bars as well, just without the face value, like the Royal Canadian Mint Bar. Now, bullion bars and rounds from private mints are still great options to buy precious metals. Just do your research because not all private mints are created equal. Some of the most popular mints are Sunshine, Scottsdale, and Pamp Susie. Another thing you should know is that there is usually no sales tax when buying bullion. Lesser pure metals will likely have sales tax, like buying junk silver or 22 karat gold jewelry. Now, should you buy gold or silver? This will all depend on your personal situation. The biggest difference is silver is more affordable, but higher premiums, has higher industrial uses, may be a better inflation hedge, and considered more speculative and undervalued. Gold is easier to store, less volatile, more rare, more desired, and considered more of a monetary metal and held by more investors. Other things to consider is the gold to silver ratio, mining, stockpile, market, supply and demand, and which one is currently the better bargain. And maybe neither are a bargain at the moment. It's not a good idea to buy silver and gold when everyone else is buying them because of uncertainty in the markets. But when the stock market is at all time highs, investors tend to forget about gold and silver and you'll be able to find better bargains. The main thing is that you do your own research to see which metal makes more sense for you and create yourself the perfect ratio of gold to silver. Now the rule of thumb is to only hold 5 to 10% of your investment portfolio in gold and silver. Okay, now where do you buy gold and silver bullion? One option for buying bullion is in person, locally, at a coin shop or bullion dealer. You can simply Google local coin shops or bullion dealers near you. You can also go to mint.ca, which is Canada's government mint website, then scroll down to the bottom and click bullion DNA dealer locator. Click Canada dealers and choose your province. These will be the most reputable dealers in your area. Buying bullion locally comes with a few benefits and drawbacks. The main benefit of buying locally is not having a paper trail if you buy in cash. And there are many reasons not to have a paper trail, which I'm not going to discuss in this video. Other reasons include no shipping costs, instant buying and selling, and the relationship you build between your dealer. Here's the cash. Grab the stash, alrighty man, thanks. Have a good one, don't hurt yourself. The biggest drawback is being followed home and criminals robbing your stack. Other disadvantages include a limited selection, higher premiums, and less opportunity for bargains. Another option to buy bullion is through a private sale. These will be a bit harder to come across, but can offer some of the best deals around and can keep your purchase private. You might be able to find a private sale through your local classified ads like Kijiji or Facebook Marketplace. Also check online platforms like Reddit or Discord. The disadvantage with this is that you're at a higher risk of being scammed. What you purchase might be fake or they might just straight up rob you. The safest way to buy gold and silver bullion is through an online dealer. My favorite dealers in Canada are silvergoldbull.ca based out of Alberta and canadianmpx.com based out of Ontario. Other options include bullionmart.ca, canadianbullion.ca, and aubullion.ca. Also, you may be able to order precious metals through your bank, TD being the most popular choice. The pros with buying online include the ability to shop around and find the best deals. They can be more credible and trustworthy, have lower premiums, have a much larger selection, and the privacy of buying in your own home. The cons include sharing personal data, shipping costs, and delivery times. Now that you know where to buy precious metals, let me show you how to buy them on silvergoldbull.ca. Once on the website, browse through the selection till you find a bullion you're interested in. You'll notice a few prices. If you pay with bill payment, check, interact online, or e-transfer, it will be cheaper than using credit card, PayPal, or cryptocurrencies. And if you buy in larger quantities, it will be even cheaper again. Once you proceed to the checkout, you'll need to create an account. Confirm your email and then enter your billing address and choose your shipping. If your order is over $299, you will qualify for free shipping. If not, you'll have to pay $19.95. Now you need to choose your payment. The two best options are bill payment or e-transfer. Once you place your order, you'll be given instructions to make your payment. Now go to your online banking and add a new bill payee. Search silver gold bull. If nothing comes up, you'll need to choose a different method. But if it does come up, enter your account number and create a bill payee. Then enter the grand total of your bill and send. If you want to use e-transfer, send your payment to payment at silvergoldbull.com and enter your order number in the message section. If you can't send an e-transfer either, go to their payment page for other options. Once they receive the payment, they will ship your product. Your shipment will be fully insured, trackable, and requires a signature. Now you have your precious metals. 
How do you store it? First of all, depending on what you buy, some bullion already comes with some kind of protective casing. Some do not. So you'll need to either buy coin capsules, sleeves, or coin tubes. Now you'll need to store your bullion in a dry, low humidity area. You can use cotton gloves when handling and silica gel packs to control moisture. As for safety and security, the best thing you can do is not tell a soul that you have gold or silver. Less people know about your stack, the more secure your bullion will be. As for where to store it and what to store it in, if you only got a handful of coins, let's say less than $5,000, there's really no need for a safe and you can just store it somewhere inconspicuous. Once your stack grows a bit bigger, let's say over $5,000, then you can consider a safe. At this point, you should be using the three layers rule. For example, under the floorboard, under a carpet, with a coffee table on top. It's also a good idea to use a decoy safe. Once your stack is really big, over $100,000, you may need to consider a full-size 300 to 600 pound safe. These will be harder to hide, but also harder to steal. But if someone puts something to your head, you just might open it for them. Just talk! Shut up! But if you got a stack worth over $100,000, you should consider other security measures like a security fence, cameras, alarms, dogs, and some kind of self-protection device, if you know what I mean. Everyone's situation will be different and everyone's values will be different. You may not feel comfortable holding $10,000 worth or you may be comfortable holding a million dollars worth. Once you don't feel comfortable, then it's time to consider storing your bullion in a vault. With silvergoldbull.ca, you can store your bullion and have it sent directly to their custodian, which is Brinks Global Service. This will come with storage fees, but includes 100% insurance of all your bullion. But remember the rule, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. So you should still consider self-custody of a portion of your stack. And another rule, is not to keep all your bullion in one spot, so split up your hiding spots. If you are considering using a vault, there are options to holding your bullion in registered accounts like a RRSP or a TFSA. But then again, your RRSP or TFSA is an investment account and bullion is an investment. It's insurance and a store of value that should be held for the full benefit of the asset. As for selling your bullion, you can simply go back to your local coin shops, bullion dealers or online dealers to cash out. Take note that there are tax implications on capital gains. And like I already mentioned, bullion is a great asset for generational wealth. So another option is to hand down your bullion to your children or grandchildren. The best part is that you can do it easily and privately. My final thoughts, silver and gold bullion in the physical form should be considered in your investment portfolio. It's insurance and protection that no other asset can provide. It's a hedge against inflation and a way better option for storing your wealth than fiat currency. The dollar is a promise of currency value. Silver and gold is the actual currency. The dollar isn't backed by anything. It's just a piece of plastic that has value because we say it does. Silver and gold is a commodity with real intrinsic value. There's a reason why central banks and governments hold gold and why they they keep buying more. And there's a reason why countries like China and Russia are increasing their reserves. So it's not too late to buy these precious metals. If this video has brought you any value, show me some appreciation by hitting the like button. If you want to continue learning, check out one of the videos on the right of the screen. If you have any questions or comments, let us know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep making money moves. Peace.